Good morning and welcome to everyone out there joining us for the second annual and first virtual Rise and Thrive, a Lives in Landscape exhibition event. My name is Austin Reese and I am Director of Survivor Empowerment at Lotus Legal Clinic in Milwaukee. Rise and Thrive is truly a one-of-a-kind project that supports and empowers survivors of sexual trauma who are alums of the Lotus Untold Stories program. In a very real way, Rise and Thrive extends, expands, and elevates what was begun during Untold Stories to explore the way natural landscapes and seascapes give survivors a sense of peace, joy, and hope. For those of you who aren't familiar with our programming, Lotus Legal Clinic provides free, comprehensive legal services, advocacy, and community education to survivors of sexual violence and trafficking across Wisconsin. Untold Stories, which is Lotus's premier survivor empowerment program, includes creative writing workshops, poetry readings, traveling art exhibitions, a community showcase event, and a literary magazine, all to support, encourage, and promote the voices of survivors. To learn more about Lotus, you can visit lotuslegal.org. I want to personally say what an honor it is to celebrate, applaud, and provide a community platform to the survivor writers who participated in this year's Rise and Thrive programming. Thank you so much, Liz, Suze, Rihanna, Lisa, Meyer, and Anne, for the bravery and the beauty of your witness and for sharing the natural places that continue to touch your heart. Rise and Thrive is the brainchild, the passion project, and the creative vision of Brianna Seipel, an advocate and artist I am truly proud to work with and learn from. Thank you so much, Brianna, for making this project a reality. It's now my honor to introduce Wisconsin State Representative Robin Vining, who represents the 14th Assembly District, which includes the people of Brookfield, Wauwatosa, and Milwaukee. She lives in Wauwatosa with her husband, a professor, two children, and their rescue boxer, Bentley. Representative Vining is also a small business owner who started her own photography business over a decade ago. In Madison, you will find her working on legislation to improve the health and lives of children and families, to combat violent crimes against women and children, and to promote good government. Representative Vining serves on the Assembly Committees on Health, Children, and Families, Financial Institutions, and Small Business Development and the Assembly Task Force on Adoption. Welcome, Representative Vining, and thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Austin. Good morning and hello, everyone. I am honored to be here virtually um, for this special event showcase. Um, Austin, thank you for that introduction, and Heather and Kate for the invitation to speak to you all today, and Brianna, thank you for your brilliant artwork. I want to thank everyone at Lotus Legal Clinic for your incredible work in our communities. As was mentioned, I am Wisconsin State Representative Robin Vining. I do represent the 14th Assembly District, which includes the people of Brookfield, Wauwatosa, and Milwaukee. My work in the legislature has focused on protecting and supporting the lives and livelihoods of women, children, and families. Much of that includes anti-trafficking initiatives and the, and the fight to protect Wisconsinites from sexual violence. I graduated with a degree in psychology and studio arts. I also have a master's degree in religion. I have been a photographer for over a decade and I co-founded a nonprofit to combat child sex trafficking. That said, I am especially honored to be part of this event today because of how much of the mission of Lotus and their work to empower survivors through different means overlaps with my work and background in the legislature as a photographer in the nonprofit world and my education. 
So we're talking today about resiliency, rising and thriving. And I realize I'm speaking today into a moment where we as a community are enduring so much pain. We're here discussing resiliency, even as the world whirls around us, crying out with so much. We are amidst a dangerous pandemic, threatening the lives and livelihoods everywhere, but disproportionately affecting our most vulnerable. Um, racism is a public health crisis, depression, anxiety, stress. It is a difficult time right now. And so we are here in this moment highlighting what it means to be a survivor, to be resilient, to declare peace in the midst of fear and hope in the world of fear. And so I want to talk about rising and thriving. And first, when I think about rising and thriving, I think about the relationship between vulnerability and courage. I am a big fan of Brene Brown and her research on the relationship between vulnerability and courage. When we are vulnerable, when we share ourselves with each other, we are dep depicting tremendous courage. I think Brene Brown is right that vulnerability and courage are related to each other, that our willingness to be vulnerable with each other makes us more courageous people, that the more vulnerable we are with each other, the more courageous we naturally become. And I think that has something to do with vulnerability being terrifying, and yet we do it anyway. And I think it also has something to do with connecting with other humans, both on the basis of our pain, but also our resilience. And while we cannot expect everyone to greet our vulnerability with open hearts, our vulnerability and our courage are, a sign, are signs of resiliency. Um, and second, when I think about rising and thriving, I think about the power of speaking truth. Uh, so our vice president-elect Kamala Harris came to Milwaukee in June of 2018 and gave a speech in a small room in an art gallery. And a speech that I remember in my own mind as, let's speak truth. She stood and declared, let's speak truth. And then she declared pieces of our world systems that are unjust, unfair, unequal. And I think we can do that too. We can speak truth that our children and our neighbors deserve to be protected from sex trafficking, from sexual violence, that legislators need to do our jobs and pass the right laws for that to happen, that Wisconsinites deserve that Wisconsin be a true safe harbor state, that Wisconsin declare a zero tolerance for sexual violence and legislate accordingly. We can speak truth that partisan politics getting in the way of that is wrong and Wisconsinites deserve better. We can speak truth that racism is violence against humanity. We can speak truth that Black Lives Matter. We can speak truth that trauma deserves the attention of healing. We can speak truth that the criminal justice system system isn't just and needs repair. We can speak truth that not only as an act of resistance, but also as an act of resiliency. It's an honor to be here today and to celebrate the resilient and the a community rising and thriving. I am inspired by survivors, by the audacious act of, resi of resilience and by communities of people drawing toward each other with commitment to one another in a world that so often threatens to divide us. I wanna thank Lotus to your staff for your work, for your commitment to a more fair and just and whole world. Thank you for your time today, thank you for being here to celebrate and showcase rising and thriving. And it is now my pleasure to introduce Brianna Joy Seipel. Brianna is a Milwaukee-based artist, designer, and curator. Her work explores our relationship with the outdoors and the power of wild spaces to heal, inspire, and transform. Projects like this exhibit um, like this exhibit combined her passions for painting, writing, and building community through compassionate storytelling. Hello, Brianna. Hey, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for being here. And thank you, Robin, for that introduction. Um, I'm really so thrilled with the work you're doing in the 14th Assembly District. And we just thank you for your time this morning for being with us. Um, and thank you, everybody who's out there listening. Um, it's really my honor to share this work with you today. Um, I'm one of three artists working on this project. So Austin Reese, who you heard from at the beginning, he served as our creative writing coach and kind of a sounding board for all the elements that you're going to see today. 
Um, and then you'll also meet Michael Snowden in a few minutes, who um, is our filmmaker and photographer. He's a Milwaukee-based artist as well. So it's been fantastic to collaborate as a team with these uh, other artists and our amazing six writers. Um, before we share that work with you, um, I want to just talk a little bit about the spirit behind this work. Um, like Robin said, uh, my work is really about exploring our connection to the outdoors um, and really exploring the power of wild spaces to heal and inspire our lives. I'm really interested in stories of landscapes and how um, they shape our identity and also why they endure in our hearts and in our memories and in our stories that we tell one another. Um, I've worked alongside Lotus for about six years and uh, mostly as a graphic designer, but also as a volunteer. And over that time, I've had the opportunity to attend many of their spoken word events, um, as well as their annual showcase, uh, the Untold Stories Showcase, where uh, survivors share their written and, um, and speak their, their poetry and is paired with the artwork of local artists. And it, that program has been so powerful to witness over the years, particularly um, to witness survivors telling their stories in community, because not only do we share our stories with one another to lift each other up, but then sharing that story with the community um, provides an opportunity for the community to witness those stories and to stand in solidarity um, for the rights and dignity of survivor voices. So working alongside Lotus has really uh, changed my life over the years, and I'm honored to be able to work with alumni of the Creative Writing Program um, for Rise and Thrive this year. So uh, I want to share a quote with you that uh, Rachel Monica Wilcox wrote uh, several years ago, and it's, it's resonated in my heart ever since. So she said, fundamentally, Lotus's programs represent a humanities and art-centered effort towards justice and survivor empowerment, helping our clients live through the challenges of their cases and come through with hope and purpose on the other side. And hope and purpose are two words that just truly reflect the spirit of Lotus Legal Clinic and what Rise and Thrive is all about. Um, I've often heard Austin say that the purpose of sharing survivor stories with the public is to build empathy and awareness one story at a time. And so I hope in a small way that that's what this exhibit can do today. Um, the goal primarily is to simply honor the stories of remarkable human beings through the landscapes that inspire them. But secondly, I also hope that we can engage the, com the community um, in a broader way to talk about what does it mean to rise and thrive. Um, just in our own lives and in the lives of others. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you real briefly here before we get to the videos that we'll be unveiling today. I just want to thank the Wisconsin Arts Board uh, for their support of this project. The, the program is supported in part by a grant from the Wisconsin Arts Board with funds from the state of Wisconsin and National Endowment for the Arts. Uh, we're honored to uh, be a recipient of their uh, their generous grant money for this project and I think it really shows um, at both a state and a national level that the stories of survivors are um, are important and these stories need to be shared so we thank them for their support. Uh, Michael you can go to the next slide. So each of the paintings that are in this exhibit um, are a place in the outdoors where a survivor of sexual violence has found healing, inspiration, or personal transformation. Uh, this project for me in three words is about healing, resilience, and hope. And sharing those stories um, through a landscape, I think, is a beautiful way to invite an audience in through something that is familiar. Um, I think that's the power of landscape paintings. Uh, Michael, you can go to the next slide. Um, the, the power of a landscape painting as a visual artist, to me, is this, this ability to invite a viewer into a story through something beautiful. Um, and I, I said uh, many times about this project that an oil painting is a beautiful object, right? But when it's paired with the story um, of healing, of resilience, and hope, it becomes something so much deeper. Um, and that's really been so thrilling for me um, in this project is to be able to 
to work alongside creative writers and collaborate on something so much larger than just my story, just their story, but to create something truly um, co-creative. Um, to talk a little bit about the process of this work, um, with each of these slides, you see the, the mini oil painting uh, on paper. It's a study that I do for each panel before creating the piece. Um, participants choose a landscape that's personally meaningful and then work through a series of creative writing prompts on this project. Um, and then also led a writing workshop this summer to help us really dig into what is the story we want to tell through this place in the outdoors? What do we want a viewer to feel that we felt in that place? Um, so in turn, as the writing was taking place this summer, Michael and I began to work on the visual art component. So I created oil paintings in the studio here. And then as I was doing that, I was recording small bits of the painting process on a camera and on my phone. And I got sent all of that footage to Michael and he has been brilliantly cutting together the paint, the process of the painting coming to life with the stories, um, both written and spoken word um, from the participants to really blend those two pieces together in a video format. Uh, and to me, co-creating in the midst of a pandemic um, is just really, um, it's been really powerful to be able to, even though we can't be in person, we can still create something really beautiful together. So um, before we switch to the short films here, I just wanna share that for everyone on the call today, no matter what your life experience is, I really truly believe that your story matters. And so I wanna invite you to pay attention today to the, the stories that touch you. Um, pay attention to the places in the natural world that impact you and why. Um, whether it's one of the pieces today that you hear or something that, that you remember from your personal life that, oh yeah, that place is a place of healing. That place I am most myself. That place I'm most at rest. Um, what are the landscapes that inspire, that really inspire you and explore why? Um, how can you use that knowledge to tell a story that speaks to others? Um, so without further ado, I will turn it over to Michael here. He's going to introduce himself and show this, um, the short films that were produced as part of this work. Um, just a quick caveat to the films, because we are in this COVID era of Zoom, uh, we have discovered over time that sometimes videos that are streamed through Zoom can be a little bit choppy. Um, the audio should come through perfectly clear, um, but if, if you have any trouble seeing the videos, I'm going to drop a link in the chat area um, to the YouTube videos that you can go see them again after uh, our presentation today if you're interested in, uh, in watching them again. So if you have any, any choppiness on the visuals, um, you can feel free to go watch those again, uh, and they should stream really clearly as a, um, as a single viewer. So uh, Michael, you can go ahead and take it away. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Michael Snowden. Um, I was the filmmaker on this project, and I am very enthused to be working with everybody. Um, these kind of projects where I'm able to help people tell their stories and kind of display it through a visual medium is something that I really love. And each of these stories hold a lot of weight and a lot of power. Um, I would thank every, everybody that um, participated in this project, and I'm excited to show you guys these videos. So I'm going to go ahead and cue that up for you guys. Thank you. 
storm in three acts. Act one, the storm surprises. With a rush of wind, clouds that crowded into piles of white and gray are sucked into swirling darkness. They burst, releasing their load and blotting out the white blue afternoon. Sheets of rain pelt the sea, wind churns, white caps on the wild waves. The storm catches me unaware. I have not prepared my family. We are punished with winds so fierce they whip with their fury. They could destroy us all. It leaves destruction. Fallen branches, sand damaged glass, debris strewn across land, but it doesn't destroy my family. Act two, seabirds predict storms. Pelican sense a storm long before humans see it. They gather in the sky and along the sandpipers, terns and seagulls. They swoop together to the safety of seagrass, hollows in the sand or piers, and they shelter together. I've watched a pelican swoop to the beach as the storm hits. She tucks her head under a wing. Seagulls and terns surround her. She is a solid brown mother bird keeping her community together on that stretch of sand. If seabirds are caught in the air in the worst kind of storm, a hurricane, they fly to the center, the eye of the storm, and stay in the calm while seeking land. Storms take both mothers and daughters by surprise. Our daughters aren't always able to find safe shelter. They're unaware of the calm in the eye of the storm. Winds pull them away. Crouched in the midst of wind, rain, and lightning, so jagged it threatens to cut them in two, they're defenseless. What happens when we can't reach them? When we can't pull them into the center of our sheltering circle? We search for them. I absorb the briny air and refuse to bend against blowing sand that stings my legs and arms and face. These storms may wound me, but I won't let them destroy me or my family. If I see one of us battered by the rain near my hill of sand, I fight. I rage against the wind. I fly into the eye of the storm and stay there until I can bring the lost one to safety. We each must hold our rescued daughters and sons in our arms, our wings of comfort and healing, and teach them how to survive the next storm when it comes. Act three, storms teach truth. I know the storm's power. Heavy clouds always release their load. Rain pounds the sea, wind churns up white caps, and fragile creatures are blown off course. I know my power as well. I can find the eye of the storm and bring others along to ride out the worst. I bring them back safely to land. Sometimes the rain spends itself out at sea, or warm rain washes against our faces and cleans the salt air. Sun rays stream beneath clouds, orange and pink and purple. Light reflects on the water. We reclaim the calm. I am the gentle rain that comes and cleans old wounds, rectifies the hurts, and finds hope in the colors of the sky. I'm the heart of a family that heals. We have, all of us, survived. Still, sometimes we look for solace, for comfort, for release in the obvious. The soft petal of a rose, the faint scent of jasmine, the still of the water. We never think that comfort can come in the eye of the storm, or the desolation of hope and despair. I am learning to allow what he allows, to work together for my good, it is necessary. Some paths I would never have walked had I not been pushed. I have learned in whatever state of being I am in to be content, to be still, and to listen.
Sun Will Rise Again by Lisa McCormick. The year before my son passed away, in late winter, we took a trip to Playa de Carmen, Mexico. On one calm morning, we woke up early and walked down to the beach to capture the sunrise long before anyone else had begun their day. We walked along quiet to the edge of the water and laid our flip-flops on the beach chairs. As the sun rose, beams of sunlight broke through the clouds, showing us the beauty of God's creation. Each photo we took was even more beautiful than the last. It was breathtaking. For a moment, nothing else mattered. No more drugs or running away. No worry, no fear. Just complete trust that the sun will come up and a new day will begin. It was evident there had been a storm the night before. The waves so dark and fierce were crashing on the shore. The waves as they hit were like the challenges I faced with my son. Each slap of the water was so strong it almost knocked me over. Sometimes the spray would reach my face and startle me, but I kept my eyes on the horizon. Beyond the water's edge was the most beautiful sunrise. A new day was beginning. The dark and churning sea changed as the sun rose, becoming calmer and more colorful with each passing minute. It was an ombre of blues like none I had ever seen before. From a deep navy to the lightest of turquoises, and so clear you could see the bottom of the ocean floor. Yet if you look closely, you can see what the tide has brought in. Miles and miles of seaweed torn from its roots and tossed about by the storm. It had finally come to rest on the sand by our feet, looking exhausted from the journey. My son, oblivious to the mess, jumped through the waves, splashed in the sea, kicked up sand, and basked in the growing warmth of the sun. His happiness was on full display as nearby resort workers attempted to bury the piles of seaweed, hiding it away before the guests could notice. This memory, these images, illuminate something essential about my life now, how I choose to deal with the storms that rage in the night, the problems and difficulties caused by trauma. In the aftermath, I rise early to clean the beach and brush off the sand. I look toward the horizon, put a smile on, and begin again. I trust in God that the sun will rise again. Port Sanctuary by Suze Elizabeth. Quiet, peace-filled, slow transitions from dusk to dawn. Will birth come today? Relax. Morning is praying. Dawn has not given birth yet. I shall be still. I shall wait. Soft, quiet rhythms of nature begin to echo echo so slowly, yet do not look away. The sun will rise today, maybe soon. I can feel God's presence. He is all around. Be still, my child. Yes, I will, but could you hold me, please? My weeping willow friends wrap its calming feathery leaves around me while I anticipate you. Yes, I shall be safe with you. I am calmly embraced by your beautiful nature and the soft healing voices of your nurturing nature. Nature's music, yes, it echoes from all around, a symphony, beautiful rhythms, each their own lullaby. From the wind's wet kiss carrying dew, the birds, their tweets, their own love tunes. I shall be still. I will embrace your creation. It, it, it is just so beautiful. It feeds my soul. I will be safe in this place, yes. 
Yes, I will be safe with you. The soft, natural noises from nature invite my desire to dance. And I can. No one is here but me and you. This is a place where I dream without sleeping, transition while unfolding, then share my dreams with you. I will just breathe it in. Your presence again and again, I will breathe in. I have learned I can be safe. I have learned how to embrace stillness, for I am safe with you. Here, there are no dead-end spaces, no walls closing in, no doors locking, no evil doing. All of life is birthing. Such magnificent grace. I am blessed to be here. I am birthing too. Time moves slowly. It's okay, as slow as one needs. Gentle healing. Blessed tranquility. My new reality. This is God's sanctuary and mine. Holy healing. This is God's design. I am real. I can feel. I shall now heal. My life has been blessed by you. Thank you so much, Michael, for uh, for sharing those with us. I hope you guys enjoyed them. More resources for survivors and for advocates can be found on Lotus's website, which is www.lotuslegal.org. Um, they'll have several new resources coming next week to the Untold Stories page, which you'll see on that top um, middle um, of the of their website. You can also join Lotus's mailing list and also you can learn more about how to participate in the annual Untold Stories program for those who might be interested in that. So thank you so much for being here today. We really appreciate your time. Uh, and with that, I will close out. Thank you very much.